The biggest marketing lie of all time exposed. I'd like to welcome you to my favorite soapbox. Thank you for coming. Take a seat, strap in. We're going to be here a while. First, a question, not rhetorical. I want you to answer this out loud. I don't care if you're in a public place. How many touches does it take before somebody is ready to buy? Don't think, just answer. You've all heard this. You've read it. It's been business books and books on psychology. How many touches? How many touches does it take before somebody's ready to buy? If you answered seven, you've given me the answer that I was expecting. It takes seven touches before somebody's ready to convert. Uh, here's what's really interesting. Even though this has been cited hundreds of thousands of times, including in Harvard Business School studies, this comes from a study done in the 1930s by movie studios trying to see how many times somebody needs to see a poster before they'll go see a film. So why on earth are we quoting 100-year-old data, first of all? Second, how many touches do you think it really takes to get somebody to buy? If that's from the 1930s when people weren't being inundated with ads, what is it today? Again, not rhetorical. Answer it out loud. Go. Even if you're a coffee shop, just give me a number. How many touches do you think it takes to get somebody to convert? To buy your product, whatever it is you sell. You're like, I sell enterprise SaaS products or I sell tea cozies to pirates, whatever. And now, obviously, the answer depends on the complexity of the product. Google did a study, multi-year, multivariant, thousands of data points. Um, and what they found was it takes 20 touches to sell a candy bar. 500 touches to sell a flight. So that's our window between 20 and 500. Now ask yourself how complex is my whatever it is I'm selling. And if it's less complex than a candy bar, then it's less than 20. If it's more complex than a candy bar, and I imagine it is, then it's more than 20. Is it as complex as a flight? Is it more complex? Hiring a Google Ads agency is way more complex than booking a flight, right? 500 touches just to book a flight. Just to book a flight. Now, that means that you need to be in front of your prospects as much or more than 500 times. Did anybody else just throw up in their mouth a little bit? Hold on. It gets worse. The average fashion shopper views 32 pages in a single session before making a purchase. I'm going to say it again. The average fashion shopper views 32 pages in a single session before making a purchase. Now, here's what's really interesting is those 32 pages have been catalyzed by one touch point. That's one ad. Clicked on the ad, went to the pages, viewed 32 pages. That only counts as one touch. That means that we need marketing campaigns that support multi-touch, multi-page engagements. We have to actually give people the opportunity to engage with us in dynamic ways. This is why I hate squeeze pages so much. Because you can't push an educated consumer to a squeeze page 500 times without pissing them off. So what do we do? What's the answer? Where do we go from here, Cosm? Don't depress me. Give me answers. First, diverse ads, diverse creative. You need to have enough. It's so funny too, because I'm such a hypocrite because we run the same ads, um, especially from a remarketing perspective. So look at me, egg on my face. Um, I mean, we've got a significant diversity in our YouTube channel, but some of our ads are, you know, old, tired. Um, you have to have diversification in your, in, your, in your ads, in your creative, because you need to be able to deliver ads to people so that they're not going to get sick of your message 499 times into it. Um, you know who's really good at this is Geico. If you're one of the gold standard, Geico pumps out. And Geico's ads, I don't know why everybody's so obsessed with Geico's ads. I never thought they were that good. They're just diverse. They're just really diverse. And with uh, ChatGPT and MidJourney and all the AI, this is not hard, y'all. You can pump out an unbelievable amount of ads and just keep loading them up into Google and Facebook. And the machine learning is going to take them and use them. And incidentally, uh, the generative AI inside of Google is going to start doing this for you. Diverse ads, diverse creatives, number one. Number two, it's going to be shocking coming from me. Omni-channel remarketing. Omni-channel remarketing. You want to be remarketing on every single available channel in existence. Google, Facebook, Twitter, Taboola, Outbrain, AdRoll, Pinterest, Reddit, Six Flags. I made that last one up. You want to remarket on everything you can remarket on because remarketing is generally very, very cheap or effectively free if you're only paying when they click. And it brings you closer, closer to those 500 touches. As a matter of fact, I think it's the only thing... It's the only thing that would get you to 500 touches without playing like insane batch and blast, you know, like radio, television, newspaper style batch and blast. Last, but definitely not least, quality content. If somebody's going to view 32, what was it? Let me go back to my previous slide. 32 pages in a single session. You need to give them 32 pages worth of content. Makes you wonder, did they view 32 pages because, or did they stop at 32 because they were done? Or did they stop at 32 because 
that's where the average store ran out of content. Hmm. You want to make sure you have quality content. Again, with the AI tools out there, this isn't hard anymore. As a matter of fact, I think this is the one way that small brands are going to be able to differentiate themselves from small or from big brands, which is creating massively quality content. Massively quality? Massively quality. No. Creating insanely high quality content um, on granular scales that big brands just never would never would mess with. Um, so so to just recap, diverse ads and creative, you're going to be pummeling people to get death with a message. Make sure that you have diversity, especially at the top of the funnel, especially at the top of the funnel. Um, with the omni-channel remarketing, less than 2% of your target is going to click on any given ad. And that's good, by the way. So get out in front of them. Uh, be a ubiquitous truth. I call myself digital herpes. People are like, dude, I can't get rid of you. I see your ad everywhere I go. And I go, I know, I'm digital herpes. Um, you'll never be the same. That's gross. I'm sorry. And then quality content speaks for itself. And, you know, it's so funny how content is king. Just the trope just keeps coming back. Um, I've got citations in the description of this video if you'd like to go track down some of the data that I cited. Uh, it's expertly researched by me. And I shoot a video every day. I'd love for you to watch more videos. So if you want to do that, you can subscribe. And if you don't, don't. I'll see you tomorrow. Let's burst some bubbles. I'm going to give you the quick and dirty truth about every campaign type inside of Google Ads. Uh, this is all the stuff that nobody wants to talk about, but everybody who runs Google knows is true. Foist, foremost, search. So expensive, but so effective. Here's the thing about search. You're at the extreme bottom of the